Happy Lord's Day po sa bawat isa. At tawa po na tayo po ay muling uh, kakasama sa pagpupuri, pagpapasalamat, pagsamba sa ating uh, Panginoon Diyos. Ito pong buwan na ito, we're uh, discussing about the hindrances of following uh, Jesus. At napakarami pong mga strongly, that strongly hinder our pursuit of Christ. Lahat po tayo ay may mga barriers sa buhay po natin that can keep us from following the Lord Jesus. At kung tayo po ay hindi magiging maingat, they will lead us away from our calling in God. At kung meron man pong isa that strongly hinders us in our pursuit of Christ, I would say it is our pride, ang ating pong kapalaluan, our refusal, our stubborn refusal to see ourselves as God sees us. Tayo po'y lumapit sa Panginoon, tayo po'y manalangin. Our great God and Heavenly Father, the line po namin that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you. Dalangin namin, Panginoon, na tinihiling ang tulong ng iyong banal na Espiritu to enable us, Father, to hear your word and to understand it not just with our minds, but that our hearts would understand, that we would embrace your truth, and that our lives would be transformed and even freed through your word by the power of your Holy Spirit. Ito pong aming samot dalangin sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Sa novel book po ni Wendell Berry na Remembering, ikinuwento niya po doon ang isa hong lalaki na nagngangalang Andy Cutlet. At siya po ay naninirahan sa isa hong uh, bukirin sa Kentucky. Kasama niya po ang kanyang asawa, mga anak at ang kanya pong mga magulang. Noong pong uh, panahon o buwan ng Oktubre na kung saan ay malapit na hong matapos ang anihan sa kanilang bukirin, almost finished ang kanila hong pagka-harvest na sinusubukan po ni Andy na linisan na ho yung kanyang corn picking machines, yung makina na nagaani uh, ng mais. Sa asawang palad, nakalimutan niya ho na ito ay patayin. <clears throat> At dahil po doon, nahagip ang kanyang kamay at naputol ang kamay ni Andy. At simula po noon, naging mahirap para kay Andy ang mabuhay. Dinibdib ng gusto ni Andy ang pagkakawala ng kanyang right hand, which is yung kanyang lakas mismo. Ito ang nakakapagtrabaho sa kanya. And so when Andy lost his hand, he lost his hold of all that was dear to him. At mula po noon, yung uh, aklat na ito, ang kanyang sentro ng tema ay pumapatungkol na sa mga pasakit, pain na nararanasan ni, ni Andy. So yung kanya pong bukirin ay... Uh, hindi po naging madali na para sa kanya na i-manage dahil talagang hirap na hirap po siya. So, palit hindi po yun naging uh, kahadlangan para magawa pa rin po ang uh, dapat pong gawin sa bukirin ni uh, Andy. At uh, tinulungan po siya ng kanyang mga magulang, ng kanyang mga anak at lalo higit ng kanya pong asawa, at maging ang kanya pong mga kapitbahay, ay nakipagtulungan po sa kanya para may ayos po muli ang kanya pong bukurin, at uh, maging maayos din po ang kanila pong buhay. Subalit sa kabila ho noon, nagpagpapakita ng pagmamalasakit at pagmamahal, pag-aaruga, pag-aalaga kay Andy, 
naging mahirap para kay Andy na tanggapin ang lahat ng yon. Naisipin niya sa kanyang sarili na hindi niya patanggap pa rin na para bang sa kanyang sarili wala na siyang magagawa. Ang makita niya ang kanyang anak na lalaki na si Marcy na tumutulong sa kanya and whatever it cost him, it often it cost him a great deal. Mahirap pa rin para sa kanya. Makita niya yung kanyang anak na si Betty, itong anak niyang batang babae, na tinitignan siya, hindi niya matagalan na makita na mata sa mata ang kanyang anak na babae. And nothing in Andy's life had ever so drained him than having to receive and go on receiving day after day after day after day and just to sit there and take it. Para bang naghihintay na lang siya. Para bang, sa madaling salita, parang may silbi pa ba ako? And he, he wasn't able to pay it back. Paano pa, paano pa ako kikilos? So, uupo na lang, maghihintay sa kanilang kalinga, sa kanilang charity, sa kanyang pangangalaga. And the hardest person, that most difficult person for Andy to receive this care and, and charity was from his wife, sa kanyang asawa na si Flora. Hindi matanggap ni Andy ang talagang nangyari sa kanya na sa kabila ng uh, pangako ni Flora kay Andy that in sickness and in health, hindi kita iiwan. Hindi pa rin matanggap yon ni Andy. At minsan, nagkaroon sila ng uh, conflict matinding uh, pag-aaway sapagat Andy did not trust Flora, his wife. Andy did not trust her love na, na, na mamahalin pa rin ni Flora si Andy. Andy did not trust her to love him because Andy did not see himself as lovable. And so, sa katapusan po, umalis si Andy sa kanilang tahanan. Iniwan po niya ang kanyang pamilya with bitterness, with fear, and with shame. At uh, doon po nagwakas ang uh, kwento and as much of the rest of that painful but sana may redemptive story yeah, that Andy, ma ma maalala niya yung, yung lugar at yung mga tao na nagmahal sa kanya. Isa kong parang napakalungkot po na story Yet, I think, nakuha ho natin kung ano yung uh, nilalaman ng kwento. How hard it is to receive and to go on receiving a love that does not depend on our usefulness, ng ating productivity, ng ating kagandahan, ng ating attraction, ng ating beauty, hindi doon. How hard it is to receive that love. Now, the question that I ask myself as a struggling Christian, the question that I ask myself once and over, over and over again, and the question I am asked as a pastor over and over again is, how do I move those fruits from my head to my heart? You see, Andy Catlett received, he accepted Flora's vow in sickness and in health. But he couldn't get it from here to here. He couldn't get it from his head to his heart. He had not dripped down. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. In chapters 13 to 17 of John, what is called the Upper Room Discourse, Jesus is with His beloved friends, His disciples. And what He said to do in the Upper Room Discourse is this massively significant instruction. Kaya pag binasa ho natin ang chapters 13 to 17, ang daming instruction ng Panginoon. Kung ba parang habili na ng Panginoon sa kanyang mga disciples. The next five, five, the next five chapters are almost entirely Jesus' words to His disciples. And 
What I want to focus on with the rest of our time this morning is to simply focus on uh, Jesus' example of humility in washing the disciples' feet and itong dialogue niya, bit, dialogue niya with, uh, uh, between him and Peter. And I want to look at three things. First, the sightlessness of pride. And second, the subtlety of pride. And third, the solution to pride. And so, first, the sightlessness of pride. Kailangan po nating maintindihan ang context ng passage na ito in order for us to fully grasp all that is going on in this passage. Now, if you look at verse 2, this is a dinner scene. Isang hapunan, natagpo. This is the last meal. The last supper. And normally, before supper, yung host ng tahanan no, would have a slave. Meron talagang isang alipin para maghugas ng paa ng kanyang mga bisita ng kanyang mga be, ng kanyang mga guests. It, it, it was slaves or uh, servants work, trabaho yan ng alipin. And only the lowest of servants would wash feet because in the first century of Palestine, ang kanilang paniniwala, ang kanilang pananaw, the feet were the dirtiest part of the body. Yan ang pinakamarumi. In the day when where there was no asphalto, walang concreto, walang cemento to just to travel on foot. At uh, tatandaan din natin sa paglalakbay kasama diyan ang mga hayop na nagdalakbay din and the same well-worn uh, well-worn paths. And so if you walk a mile uh, to your destination. By the time you arrive, no, uh, yung iyong paa ay nangangamoy na, iba na ang amoy. Your feet already foul and filthy and ugly and unclean. Maduming madumi na ang paa mo. And so, the job of washing feet is very undesirable. Hindi mo yan gugustuhin. Now, as Jesus and the disciples gathered for supper, there was no servant present to wash their feet. Because the room is rented, there is no servant standing by the requisite na merong uh, daladalang pichel, uh, planggana, a towel to wash Jesus and His disciples' feet. And this was not something the disciples quickly volunteered for. Nagpapakiramdaman sila, wala nagpo-volunteer. Walang alipin na maguhugas. It is said that the Jews would not even demand of their Jewish slaves to be foot washers. Hindi pa pwede sa kanila yon. Washing someone else's feet was a task reserved for the most menial of slaves. Pinakamababa. Na alipin. A, a Jewish commentary on the book of Exodus suggests that the Jewish slaves would not be required to wash the feet of others. That it was, uh, it, that it was so uh, demeaning. Napakababang trabaho niyan. It should be reserved for Gentile slaves. And so, the job of washing people's dirty feet before they recline to eat was reserved for the lowest slave. It was a job they relegated to the Gentile slaves, to the lowest in society. And so there is no way, no way that the disciples would lower themselves to such a position in front of one another. At least not while they are vying and competing for kingdom greatness. Walang tumatayo sa kanila. Nagpapakiramdaman sila. Dead ma lahat. Patay mali lahat. Now, it is important for us to understand what was going on in the hearts of the disciples 
Of course, the disciples, being full of themselves, punong-puno ng kanilang, sa kanilang sarili, and all too concerned with their power and position in the kingdom. And they were too proud to do the dirty deed. Hindi ko pwedeng gawin yan. Marahil yan ang tumatakbo sa isipan nila. Yaks! Ang dumi ng paan ng... Ito, si Pedro, ang dumi ng paan yan. Ito si Juan. Now, the disciples had been too busy wondering who among them was the greatest. Too busy to consider serving as a foot washer. And their argument was about their respective places in the hierarchy of Jesus' followers. Who is the greatest? Who is most important? Kaya pagka binasa ho natin at inaral po ang gospel accounts, we see that although Jesus continued to speak about yung kanyang impending na kamatayan, the disciples just could not come to grips with it. Hindi nila masapo. Hindi nila ma mayakap yun. They, because they were so preoccupied with the kingdom who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom. In fact, twice in the book of Luke, in the, Gospels of, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, the, disi the disciple found to be asking that question to Jesus, who among us is the greatest? Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 22. And so there was an ongoing undercurrent of rivalry build, uh, na, na, na mumuo, <laughs> that was building among the 12 disciples. And it is fascinating, although Jesus had preached a humility. For example, in Matthew chapter 18, ang dami ng pangaral ng Panginoon about humility. And we learn in, in, in Matthew chapter 20 that James and John and their mother came and asked Jesus for a place of prominence in the kingdom. Lord, tabi niya tong dalawang anak ko, ah. And that would sit on the right hand and one would sit on the left. Sadly, ambitious pride was therefore a recurring theme among the disciples. And in this upper room scenario, it's going to be exposed in a dramatic way by Jesus washing their feet. And then even more prof profoundly, when he goes to the cross the next day. So, walang tumatayo, walang kumukuha ng planggana, ng tawel. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, ako ang tatayo, ako ang maguhugas, ako ang maglilinis ng paan ninyo. And so, they are making preparations to eat with dirty feet, expecting someone else to do it or just don't do it at all. And while the disciples were hesitant or even unwilling to assume that role of the servant, Jesus displayed his love for his very own who were in the world by taking on the role of the servant, washing the feet of his disciples. Verse 4 he arose from supper, he laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Unbelievable. And then in verse 5, it says that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. The one who is most holy assumes the role of the lowliest slave and then washes the feet of those at least holy. Even the feet of Judas na magkakanulo sa kanya. And this is incomprehensible condescension. What a rebuke to the disciples. 
and to all of us. The text does not say, hindi ho natin mababasa sa passage na ito, but I can only imagine that a very uncomfortable silence permeated that room. Nung nakita nila na ang Panginoong Yesu Cristo tumayo, tinali ang, kany- ang-, ang-, ang towel sa kanyang waist, kinuha ang planggana, binuhos ng tubig doon, at isa-isa po silang hinuhugasan. I cannot imagine, siguro yung katahimikan, as they watch the Lord of glory assume this lowly role. Perhaps they suddenly remembered what Jesus had taught them earlier when He said, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Perhaps naalala nila ang sinabi ng ating Panginoon, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. But whatever was going on through their minds, one thing was certain, mga kapatid. Their selfish pride was about to be exposed as they watch the self-existent creator of the universe, the Lord of glory, prepare to wash their feet. Pero meron po akong nais po na inotice po natin sa bagay na ito, sa tangpo na ito. Because the towel and the basin filled with water was already there. Nakahanda na ho kasi yan eh. Narian na yan. It had been there all along. The proper preparation has been made. But you must understand is because of our pride and self-preoccupation, we become so self-absorbed that we simply do not see opportunities to serve. Dahil punong-puno tayo ng ako, ako, at ako. We are by nature turned, turned in on ourselves. Kaya di ba cute na cute tayo sa sarili natin? Gandang-ganda tayo. Puging-pugi tayo sa sarili natin. We are by nature self-preoccupied. We are by nature selfish. We are by nature prideful. We are too busy looking for a stage and for a spotlight. You may be a legend in your own mind and think you are too important to serve those who are in your mind mas mababa sa'yo. But compared to the Lord of glory, you are nothing. I am nothing. What a rebuke to our egotistical and narcissistic culture that has made a pride, a virtue, and humility as a sign of weakness. Ayan mga kapatid, in order to fully grasp what is happening here, you must be brutally honest with yourself as I must be brutally honest with myself. We all love to promote ourselves. And if you don't see that, you are seriously blinded by your pride. And this is really what makes Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter so successful. Hindi huba. They have capitalized on that. Kaya ating nanyo yung mga wall ninyo sa FB. May iba ba dyan? Wala. Puro tayo. <laughs> Puro ako. It is now considered acceptable and even normal for people to promote themselves. To praise themselves. And to put themselves first. It seems everyone is screaming for his or her own rights and seeking to be recognized as someone important. We are self-absorbed. And we demand that others meet our needs in very subtle ways. In very subtle ways. 
At kapag yun ay hindi nangyari at na, naibigay sa atin, our hearts get filled with anger. Pagka hindi na like yung pinos mo, nagagalit ka, nagtatampo ka, we become critical and, uh, and, 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 and contentious. And that results in conflict and contempt and depression and emotional breakdowns and aggression and hostility and on and in on and it goes on. Now, nais ko pong iwanan kayo with a sobering thought that will hopefully expose the stubbornness of our pride. You would think that this would have, have a profound and immediate impact on the disciples. Maring, sa akin, maring isipin ko yun. But you know, pride doesn't give up early. In Luke's account, in chapter 22, reveals that after the Passover meal, natapos na ba doon? Nung nahuhinugasan na nila sila ng Panginoon? Yung kanilang mga paa, nilinis na? Because in Luke chapter 22, Jesus announced that one of them who would betray him. But rather than concentrating on the shocking news that the Lord is going to be betrayed and the unimaginable pain that he must have felt that time. Anong sabi ni Luke sa verse 23? They began to discuss among themselves which one of them it might be one who was going to do this thing. Nagtuturoan na. Nagkakaroon na sila ng, ito yun, panagay ko ito. Ito yun. Basta ako, hindi ako yun. Now, why such a callous disregard for Christ? Na hindi man lang nila naisip. Ano yung nararamdaman ng ating Panginoon that time? Why is the focus on, okay, which one of you? I know, it's not me. Hindi ako yun. After all, I'm competing. I'm contending for positive, uh, for position dito sa, sa grupo natin. So, ikita po ba natin how all that works well, the cause was pride. Remember again, for months, they had been trying to compete. They, they were trying to jockey for position in the coming kingdom. And so, Jesus' announcement that someone is going to betray him, one of them caused them not only to be suspicious of one another, but to actually use this as an opportunity to exalt themselves, as you will see. Even after Jesus had just washed their feet, the Lord certainly might have thought, hindi niyo pa rin nag-gets yun. Hindi niyo pa rin nakuha. During the American Revolution, a man in civilian clothes rode past a group of soldiers repairing a small defensive barrier, yung harang sa gyera. At mayroong isang leader na nagsisigaw, sinisigawan niya yung kanyang mga tauhan, yung mga sundalo niya na mas mabababa ang rango sa kanya. At mayroong isang naga, nangangabayo at siya'y napadaan at nakita niya na sinisigawan niya itong mga tauhan niya. And he asked, Sir, bakit mo sinisigawan itong mga tao, mga sundalo mo? At ang sabi sa kanya, Sir, I am a corporal. And that stranger na bumaba sa kanyang kabayo, nag-apologize and proceeded to help the exhausted sol uh, soldiers. Siya yung tumulong. Magbuhat, magkumpuni ng lahat. And so the job done. And he returned to the corporal and said, Mr. Corporal, next time, you have a job like this and not enough men to do it. Please, go to your commander-in-chief. I will come and help you again. By the way, I am George Washington, your commander-in-chief. Mga kapatid, pride is so powerful that it blinds us 
to our pride. We cannot even see it. We can become so convinced of our superiority, so certain that we deserve to be treated in certain ways, so skilled in the manipulation that we're not only are blinded to our own pride, but we cannot see how we need to serve others. Kasi nabubulaga na tayo ng ating kapalaluan. Kaya hindi na natin sila nakikita yung iba. At yun dapat pa natin gawin. And that is pride. And this is precisely what we see here. My dear Christian, examine your heart. If your heart is filled with jealousy and anger and resentment, know that pride is lurking somewhere in the shadows. If your marriage is not working well, your relationship with others is not working well, look first at your own pride. If you just can seem to cope with life, humble yourself before the Lord and search and destroy your own pride and then seek to wash someone's feet. Secondly, this text tells us the subtlety of pride. And so as they were eating the meal, Jesus rose from supper. He, he does what rabbi would never do. Hindi ginagawa ng rabbi yan. He takes off his outer clothing. He, he puts on the clothes of a slave, a towel around his waist. He pours water into a basin. He goes from disciple to disciple, from foot to foot, and washes the filth from between their toes. Yung mga pagitan, kasama yun, huhugasan mo yan at lininisin mo yan. Until he comes to Peter. Peter says, Lord, do you wash my feet? Now, pansinin natin yung statement ni, ni, ni Peter. Peter is resisting Jesus and is reluctant as well as he should be. Because to have his master nail, luluhod siya, and wipe the foul and the filth and the ugly and the unclean from between his toes. And Jesus responds in, in, in verse 7, what I am doing you, do not, what I am doing you, do not understand, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And then, in verse 8, Peter doesn't back down. Peter, as it bars out this really strong command na napaka em 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 emphatic. Parang sinasabi niya, absolutely not, Lord. It is actually a double negative. He says, you will not not Two different negative words, one after the other. You will not not, yan yung literal na translation. You will not not wash my feet unto the ages, not to eternity, not forever. And here's the crucial question, mga kapatid. Is Peter resisting Jesus because of his humility? You will not wash my feet, Lord, unto the ages. You shall never wash my feet. Never. Is Peter resisting Jesus because of his humility? You will not wash my feet forever. Is this humility? Not my feet, Lord. Not here. Not now. Not these. I don't deserve this. I cannot accept this from you. I can let you do this, Lord. Is this humility? You see, pride can be hard to spot because it can hide behind a virtue like humility. Uh, 
ang hambog at saka humbol. Para magpinsan yan eh, magkatunog eh. And this is, this is pride's evil twin. It is counterfeit humility. It is pride dressing up in a costume. Peter's problem is undescatlet problem. And it is our problem. You will not wash my feet, never unto the ages. Peter's prideful response is in all of us. Perhaps one of the hardest things to recognize in ourselves is our pride. Kaya subtle yan eh. Hindi mo mamamalayan. Pride is subtle. Pride is something that can creep into your life, into your heart in various subtle ways. And the most subtle form of pride is not in what we do or say. It is not even in what we think. People often have pride and do not even know it is hiding in their hearts. It is deeply hidden at the very bottom of our heart and it is not even formed in, in a thought. Pride is an internal problem with deep roots in our hearts. Kaya hindi mo minsan anamalayan. Kapalaluan na, yun ay papakita mo. Ang nipis-nipis lang na naghihiwalay ng kayabangan, ng kapalaluan at kapakumbabaan. Si Jonathan Edwards po, who was one of the America's most important theologians and died in 1758, wrote an essay called Undetected Spiritual Pride. And he listed seven sneaky or subtle symptoms of pride. And they are the great fault finder. This is when we criticize other people or note how they don't measure up. Ang daming mga namumula. Mas nakikriticize, mas nakikita. Second, sabi niya, is ministering in a harsh spirit. This is when we are unkind to others, even other Christians, and do not treat them as Christ treat them. Next is putting on pretenses. This is when we act differently than we are because we want to please others. Pagbabalat kayo, pakunwari. And then, takes offense easily. This is when we act, we act mean or bitterly when we have been offended instead of being quiet and letting God be the judge. And presumption before God and man. This is when we are too bold or confident before God instead of treating Him with the awe and reverence He deserves. And hungry for attention. This is when we do things because we want to be noticed. Or we think everyone needs our help. And then lastly, pride, neglecting others. This is when we avoid others, especially those who we view to be sinful or unteachable. Instead, as Christ came down to our level, so should we with others who need spiritual guidance. Kaya ang sabi ni Jonathan Edwards, reading and understanding the symptoms of spiritual pride show us the main door by which the devil comes into the hearts of those who are zealous for the advancement of Christ. Mga pintuan yan. Minsan, may pasahero ng eroplano kasama-sama po silang naglalakbay sa himpapawid a pastor a doctor a politician a scientist and a boy they were traveling together in an airplane bigla na lang ho nagkaroon ng problema yung engine ng eroplano yung makina ng, ng eroplano and so the pilot desperately tried to fix the problem 
pero hindi siya naging hindi siya nagtagumpay. Kaya he told his passengers to each grab a parachute and jump, jump off because the plane was going to crash. Kunin niyo na ang mga parachute niyo. Ang eroplano natin ay babagsak na. And so the pilot grabbed a parachute and jumped. Nauna na yung piloto. Now the problem was, there were only four parachute left. Apat na lang ang natitira. And so, the politician grabbed quickly a parachute. Dahil politiko siya, ang sabi niya, I am an important man. I work to make important laws. So, the people need me. He grabbed the parachute and jumped off, jumped off the plane. And the doctor grabbed the second parachute and said, I have an important job. I save people's lives. So, the people need me. Kailangan ako ng mga tao. And jump, jump off the plane. And third, the scientist grabbed the third parachute and said, I am among the world's most intelligent men. The people need intelligent men like me. And jump off the plane. And now, the pastor turned to the boy and said, Anak, matanda na ako. And I have lived a full life, but you're still young and still have a long life before you. So you take the last parachute. Kuni mo na yung parachute. And, and, and the boy looked at the pastor and said, Pastor, don't worry. The world's most intelligent man took my backpack, not the parachute. While we may chuckle at the joke, marirealize po natin that pride will not let you see clearly. It is like the scientist who was blinded by his own arrogance and pride and took the wrong parachute. And his pride was his demise. Pride will not kneel. Hindi luluhod yan. Pride will not bend the knee, but pride will also not be weak. Pride will not and cannot be weak. Peter cannot receive and rest in God's love on God's terms. To, to receive and go on receiving and just to sit there and take it with empty hands, God's care and God's charity. You see, there's a thread that runs through Andy Cutlet that runs through Peter that runs through all of us. If we were to be honest, we would all struggle to receive that care and that charity na natanggap ni Andy sa kanyang asawa na si Flora. Katulad ng sinasabi ng isang American novelist, si Flannery O'Connor. He said about grace. And that grace must first wound before it can heal. Kailangan mo nang masugatan bago makagaling. And I, and I, and I think if we, we were honest, we would all like Peter, pull our feet back. We would all pull our feet back. Are not we with God like Andy Carlet with Flora, his wife? Are not we with God like Peter with Jesus? pulling his feet back. You see, we would say, we are more than ready to say, are not we, that we can teach our Bible studies for Him, that we can serve the needy for Him, that we can give of our resources for Him, that we can show hospitality to, to neighbors for Him, but to see Him kneeling before us and to receive and to go on receiving that care and that charity and that grace, then living in that place, you shall never, Lord, wash my feet, never. He would rather wash feet than have our feet washed. Diba? Do you see yourself in Peter? Peter who said, Lord, I would do anything for you. 
Yun yung kanyang laging statement eh. Lord, gagawin ko ang lahat para sa'yo. And here, dito sabi niya, you shall never, never wash my feet. Is it not the hardest thing? Is this not the fight of your life to receive and to go receiving a love that does not depend on our usefulness, on our beauty, on our attraction, on our productivity? Is this not the greatest battle on the turf of our hearts? Just like the handicapped husband, Andy, has nothing to offer back to his wife day after day, after day, after day, he has to live in that weakness. So we have nothing to offer back to God to deserve His love. And Jesus says in verse 8, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me, no inheritance with me. And that's our question this morning, mga kapatid. Will you let Jesus wash you? Will you let Jesus be your cleansing agent? Will you let Him kneel before you and wash you? Is this story familiar to you? Is this story familiar to your heart? To the games that we play? To your movements away from God? Is this not the saddest story? And I think... We get this story. After all, we have seen, after all that the Lord has done to demonstrate His fatherly care for us, that we were kept, were known, were beloved, were bought. There's no condemnation. After all that He has shown us, after all that He has done to prove that His posture towards is not to condemn us, not to abandon us, but is to run and embrace and kiss us. And I think we see what's going on in Andy Cutlet's heart and in Peter's heart. If you knew how much God loves you, it would propel you even and in spite of your weakness. It would pro propel you towards Him, towards receiving His care and receiving His charity and His grace living in that place. John Owen says, You have such difficulty believing God loves you so you can no way more trouble God or burden God than your unkindness in not believing of it. And so he is saying, what depleases God the most, what burdens and grieves your God the most is your refusal to accept His love. And so John Owen is saying, this grieves God the most. Because what God wants the most is communion. It's communion with you as His child. Third, and lastly, briefly is this, what is the solution? What is the cure? What's the medicine? What's the antidote? What has Jesus offered to us in terms of healing? You have to receive and you have to go on receiving what Victor Hugo in his novel Les Miserables called The Trauma of Grace. If you look at the beginning of our text in verse 1, we read that when Jesus knew that His hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. And so at this Last Supper, Jesus is doing more 
than just giving them an example. When he says in verse 1 that he loved them to the end, that means not just chronologically to the end of his life, but it means perfectly, the full breath of his love. Kaya, when he says in verse 7, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. He means that after his death, after tomorrow, and later after his resurrection. And so Jesus is giving them a kind of dramatic parable of all that he came to do. The full breadth of the love of Christ is not that he humbled himself to wash feet. It is that he humbled himself again, as Philippians uh, tells us. By taking the form of a slave, he emptied himself, made himself no reputation, humbled himself even unto death, and death on a cross. In our, other words, mga kapatid, what Jesus is saying to Peter is this, Wait until tomorrow. Wait until tomorrow, Peter. Because I'm not just going to pour out some water to wash the dirt of your feet. I'm going to pour out my blood to wash the sin out of your heart. Wait until tomorrow. And I think Peter realizes if I have the choice, choice between my pride and Jesus, forget my pride. Forget my pride and give me Jesus. Give me him. Now, you look in verse 19, uh, verse 9, it is like the light goes on at Peter's reaction. It says in verse 9, Lord, not only my feet, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Lord, wag lang kamay ang pa ako, ang ulo ang kamay ko. It is like saying with the psalmist, Deep clean me, O God. Create in me a pure heart, a clean heart. Wash me whiter than snow. Here are my hands and my head and my feet. Make me clean. Wash me thoroughly. Cleanse me from all my iniquity. The medicine to your pride is to let Jesus love you. To give into it. To surrender. To surrender to the trauma of grace. And to go on surrendering every day. Will you surrender to it today? I know there are some here, my, myself more than anyone, who have the hardest time opening your dirty feet and opening your dirty heart to the king of the universe. And letting him do what only he can do. You do not have to pretend that you are someone other than who you are before God will wash you. You do not have to be good enough, but you have to believe that God is good enough. The truth is that our pride often gets in the way of our living in the life of Jesus wants us to live. And D.L. Moody said, I believe firmly that the moment of our hearts are emptied of pride and selfishness and ambition and everything that is contrary to God's law, the Holy Spirit will fill every corner of our hearts. And so, if you, like me, know the words, you will not wash my feet unto eternity, unto the ages. If you know those words all too well, I beg you now to forget your pride and come to Jesus. Either you wallow or swallow. Either you indulge and bask and take pleasure of your pride or swallow your pride. 
Isa may bumabati sa akin, Pastor, tumataba ka. Oo nga eh, kakakain niya ng pride. And if you don't know where to start, where to look, what to say, what to do, simply say, give me Jesus. Forget my pride. Give me Jesus. So what's the medicine for your pride? What's the cure? What's the solution to your pride? It is to receive and to go on receiving the trauma of grace. It is to receive and go on receiving the love that Jesus has for you. And thus, Peter says, Not my feet only, Lord, but also my hands and my head. Kapatid, consider that an invitation. Our great God and Heavenly Father, marahe pong salamat for these eternal fruits. May they bear much fruit in our lives to the praise of your glory. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoon, to receive your love, your grace on your terms, and to go on receiving. Lord, this week, help reveal the areas of our, of our lives that pride has crept into. We repent of this pride and turn to you. Oh Lord, we need, we need you each and every day, every moment of our lives. And we pray, Father, that you would give us Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you.